city you you will have the uh, exact address at the end of the the webinar uh, and uh, if you have any questions uh, so you are um, you are muted at the moment so if you have any questions uh, you can use uh, the the chat and after each presentation uh, we will uh, read the different questions and uh, give uh, the um, uh, the talk to the different presenters. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm Marine Gimaret from Solagro. Uh, so Solagro is a NGO working on the field of agroecology and uh, food transitions. And I prepared the, the webinar with uh, Caroline Gibert, uh, my colleague, Adrien Wetzman from uh, Good Agency and our partner um, Global Nature uh, Fund that I would like to do thanks. Yeah, maybe just one comment. When you are using the chat, uh, if you can write uh, also your function, it would be, uh, it would be great. Uh, and we are together maximum until uh, 12.30. Uh, so the, the aim of the, uh, the session today uh, would be to position the biodiversity and the food production um, in the European Green Deal uh, with a talk uh, of the European Commission's and to present so the biodiversity performance tool and its uh, application. Okay, ne next one. Uh, so just few words of introduction about uh, our four life uh, four uh, year project of a European. Um, life project called Food and Biodiversity. We were four countries, uh, Germany, Spain, Portugal and France, and so seven partners that you can see here. Um, Global Nature Fund, Boden C. Uh, Stiftung, Good Agency, Instituto Tecnico de Lisboa, Auf Solagro, and Fondation uh, Global Network. So we worked uh, all together um, for the project and for designing uh, the, the biodiversity performance tool that will be presented today. The objective of the project, uh, the general objective was to improve the biodiversity performance of the agri-food industry by supporting the standard organization and the food company uh, to include effective biodiversity criteria into their schemes and into their sourcing guidelines. So uh, we produce um, uh, several deliverables, uh, recommendations to the food industry, and you can find all this uh, document to our uh, website. So I would like to introduce now the, the three speakers. Uh, so we have the pleasure to welcome Anne Buril from the European Commission that work at the DG Environment uh, and that will um, position so the biodiversity and the produ production into the European Green Deal. Uh, then Caroline uh, Gibert from Solagro will present the biodiversity performance tool and Antoine Legrand, um, a project manager at Pink Lady Europe, uh, will uh, give us its feedback uh, by applying the biodiversity performance tool and more generally about the uh, agroecology and biodiversity uh, strategy of its company. So let's uh, now you will find um, the website. So I will give the uh, talk to Anne Buril. 
from now. Thank you. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you now see my screen and some slides. So I'm very pleased to be with you and to give you a bit of an idea of the policy context in which this project sits. Um, let me see if I can, yeah, there we get the pages turning too. Okay, so um, the big news from the European Commission at the end of last year was the adoption of the European Green Deal. And this is supposed to be the EU's new policy context for growth. And I will come back to that a little later on. But it sets an overall new approach of trying to bring together sustainable development, to bring together the economic part with the environmental part. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about two elements of this Green Deal, one of which is the biodiversity strategy and the other is the farm to fork strategy. They're very closely related, um, as you will understand that biodiversity and food are linked, um, as the seminar is all about. Um, but in addition, there are other parts of the Green Deal that are also closely related, and I'd stress particularly the climate pact and the climate law, um, which take into account the interaction between um, a healthy ecosystem and the climate. So, um, if I can, I'm switching back and forth between two screens and it doesn't like that very much. <laughs> um, let me tell you first a little bit about the EU biodiversity strategy. Um, it's made up of quite a number of different specific commitments that the European Commission wants to implement over the coming years in four different areas. The first is in the area of protecting nature, and here our main goal is to establish a larger EU-wide network of protected areas, both on land and at sea. The second set of actions are around enabling the necessary transformative change in order to address the present biodiversity crisis. The third element, in addition, we've said to protecting what nature we have, we also need to take steps to bring back some areas where nature used to exist and no longer does through a nature restoration plan. And finally, we realize that we cannot work in an isolated context, that the EU needs to take measures with our partners in other countries to address the global biodiversity challenges. And certainly this will happen through the development of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. But in the biodiversity strategy, we set out how we, the EU, needs to lead on this. Um, I don't think I need to talk a lot about why now, but just to underline that we know there's an urgency. We know that um, according to the EB Best Global Assessment, we're in the midst of a global extinction event and species are disappearing at an alarming rate and we're undercutting the health of the ecosystems that we all rely on. It's also timely because, as I mentioned, we're coming up towards the um, Convention of the Parties of the Convention on Biological Diversity where we can help lead a new global vision for biodiversity. And finally, um, we didn't know this when we were drafting the biodiversity we need more than ever to focus on mainstreaming of biodiversity into the recovery from the ongoing um, health crisis into the new multiannual financial framework. That obviously we already knew about, but this, the sanitary crisis that's facing us at the moment underlines the importance and the chance to try to build back better. And of course, the reason we see this link with the economy is because we know that the biosphere is really at the base of our society and of our economy. Um, the natural capital is, our natural capital is the bedrock for everything we do, for how we produce, how we consume, how we live. So to look a little more in detail at just two of the elements of the strategy, first I wanted to comment a bit more on the restoration part of it. Um, here we have a series of concrete commitments and actions 
that aim to restore degraded ecosystems across the EU by 2030. I'm not going to read the list to you, but you'll see there are on this slide and, and on the next slide, they go on, it's a long list. You'll see there are a number of very specific commitments and also more general actions like that the Commission will be coming forward with a proposal next year for legally binding restoration targets. Of course, we're not talking here about just restoring nature to an ideal, pristine state, but about actions to restore the functionality of ecosystems and the availability of the ecosystem services that healthy ecosystems provide. So this is where we're talking about trying to improve our agricultural model, for instance, and move from a more intensive unsustainable land use to types of land use which respect ecological principles and work in harmony with nature. So here is a few more of the actions under the restoration plan. Um, I'd like to move on to say a few words about the component of the biodiversity strategy on transformative change. We know well that if we really want to restore our ecosystems and bring back our ecosystem services, that we need to do it not just through physical actions on the ground, but we need to introduce a new governance framework, a new way to working with landowners, to working with land managers, making sure that we set into um, process a transition that's socially acceptable, that works with business, that's welcomed by business. And we need to find the correct tools to do this through regulations, through finance, through knowledge, through education, through working with all of the different actors who are involved. And here, sorry, here I move on to the farm to fork strategy, because we know that our agricultural system, our food system, it's a very important part of our society. We all need to eat, and it's a very important part of the economy. But we also know that presently it's not sustainable, and that's why the Commission has adopted this strategy to try to move towards a fair, healthy, and environmentally friendly food system. It's an approach that looks at the whole food chain, at all of the supply chains, at all of the actors, and looks to introduce systemic changes. Um, and once again, we see this as not an isolated thing that the EU should do, but as part of an effort by the EU to lead a global transition. Certainly, we know there are lots of challenges there. Again, I'm not going to read them. You can look at the, at the slides later. But it's not just about, quote unquote, protecting the environment. It's finding the right solutions that provide social sustainability, environmental sustainability, and economic sustainability. And once again, as for the biodiversity strategy, we know we need to work with all of the actors, that the solutions can only be found by bringing everyone into the picture. We know, for instance, that the choices that farmers make are framed by the decisions of agri-food companies. And those decisions themselves are framed by and also create consumers demand. So we need to look at the whole system and bring everyone into the picture. Now, if I focus a little bit on food production and what the farm to fork says specifically on the food production part of the food system, um, you can see that the overall goal is to have a neutral or positive environmental impact um, from a new transformed food production model. Um, in the strategy, we set a number of specific targets, and you'll see that these very much overlap with some of the specific targets in the biodiversity strategy. So looking at the use risk of chemical pesticides, looking at better management of nutrients so that they do their job without also causing negative impacts on the environment, on water, on human health, um, trying to reduce the sales and use of antimicrobial agents, and indeed also to try to increase the amount of land under organic farming. On that um, target, I would just mention we're fully aware that organic farming is not the only type of agro-environmental production, but it's one where we have a clear definition, so that's why we, we set the target there. 
And you'll see in the farm to fork strategy, we once again have a long set of actions to aim towards implementation of this systemic change. And here you see a few more of them. And they include a number of what we would call support actions. Whoop, that wasn't supposed to go on, but okay. Sorry about that. Um, but they're actions where we aim to support the economic actors, where we know we need to provide information, we need to provide knowledge. We know that farmers need to have support through a transition into a new agricultural model. And in that regard, um, we hope that the new common agricultural policy will help to provide that support. Um, the Commission believes that our proposal goes in the right direction and can provide the support needed to help um, producers to move to a sustainable model. Um, but right now, of course, it's in the hands of the Council and the Parliament to finalize the regulation. And then after that, it will be up to the member states to implement the common agricultural policy in their own countries. And there, it's going to be very dependent on the individual countries to set up national strategies for implementation of the CAP that do support the kind of transition that um, we all need and hope for. So, in addition, the strategy has a number of actions that target what I would call the, the middle of the food system chain. And that's to keeping in mind what I said before about the strong linkages of the middle of the food chain, the food supply companies, the people in the restaurant um, industry, they have a very strong influence on what farmers and producers decide as their production methods. So, for instance, um, under these actions to um, stimulate sustainability in the middle of the chain, we're going to be working to develop a code of conduct to encourage more companies to commit to having a green supply chain. And this will reward the farmers who move towards sustainability. I'd add that there are, we know very well, there are already many companies who are moving in this direction, but we'd like to see this become the norm. The farm to fork strategy also has actions that specifically address the consumers. And one of these is to um, move towards more information through additional um, labels on food. And so we're going to be looking at, it's a very complex issue, we're going to be looking at making a proposal for a sustainable food labeling framework. Um, this is something we've, we've got on the program for 2024, so it's not going to come out immediately. And one of the reasons we're not going to have it out there immediately is because we know that we need to get the metrics right. We know that for the labels to be useful, they have to be science-based and objective, but at the same time, they need to be easy to read. They need to be something that the consumers can understand and the companies and public authorities can also build on these methodologies for their decision making. Um, right now, there are a number of labels and claims out on the market, but we have a concern that if we have too many disparate different measures, um, that this will potentially confuse the consumer. So we would like to find a way to have some kind of widely recognized and harmonized methods and methods that can both be used for labels for the consumers, but also can be converted somehow into numbers that will help the financial decision making in companies. So we're, we're working on this and I see very clearly the link to what you are doing. Um, before closing, I'd just like to mention some of the other things that we are working on in the Commission. There are a number of initiatives under the Circular Economy Action Plan, which is another part of the European Green Deal, um, particularly work on a legislative proposal that we hope will come out next year for substantiation of green claims. Um, but also we look towards measures specifically for empower empowering consumers. 
Another important action is the taxonomy regulation that has just come into force, and this is intended to um, help in defining and promoting green investment. The main regulations in force, but work is still underway to um, collaborations in the various different sectors. Um, there's also work on non-financial reporting initiatives. And finally, I would mention um, that we do have a business and biodiversity platform that is coordinated out of DG Environment. And this is precisely intended to be a platform where businesses can come together, dialogue among themselves, and with the decision makers, the, the um, people in the commission who make policy proposals, to try to move towards better information that companies can use in the process of making decisions about biodiversity and about how both their processes and their products have an impact on environment. Um, I have to admit, I'm not sure whether your, your two companies who are going to be speaking later are active in this platform, but if not, I would, I would encourage them to do so. Um, so that's, that's the big picture. As you see, there are very many different elements um, that we're working on. We see the huge importance of transforming our food system. We see the role of the private sector. We want to work with the private sector. And we see the importance of having appropriate tools to do it. So I'm now very interested in hearing about this tool you've developed and perhaps um, hearing comments from people about how, how we can take this tool and how it might fit in with some of these other initiatives and come together as part of a system that will actually help promote consumer choice, thereby help reward those producers who are being sustainable and those companies who are trying to move in that direction also. So thank you very much. That's, that's it for me for the moment and I will be listening now. Thank you very much, uh, Anne Buril, for your uh, presentation. So, um, participants, if you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate to use the chat. Um, so, it was really interesting to uh, to ha get more details on the farm to uh, to fork strategy and to see uh, how it integrates the the whole food system. It's quite a uh, innovative and new uh, position um, uh, that will uh, that will be built now uh, so in the life food and biodiversity uh, we our basic idea was to uh, give uh, tools uh, to uh, to integrate a new uh, biodiversity criteria into uh, standards or uh, company uh, sourcing guidelines or labels. You talk about the metrics and uh, labels and you told us that you will work more on that uh, topic uh, from now. So what, what would be the next step and uh, what, what are uh, exactly the the idea or the, the objectives of, of that work today. Okay, um, as I said, there, there are many different initiatives going on. Yeah. So, um, for instance, the, the work on green claims, as I said, that legislative proposal is supposed to come up next year. So, um, the preliminary work on that is already starting. I, I, I maybe should stress that both the biodiversity strategy and the farm to fork strategy our policy papers setting out the goals and ambitions of the commission, but in order to make legally binding initiatives or targets or rules, we will be going through the normal um, process of developing EU legislation. So for each individual initiative that I've mentioned, if it's going to lead to something binding, it will go through an impact assessment, it will go through a public consultation. So, at, at, for each of the individual initiatives listed, there'll be an opportunity to
get input from and opinions from the various different stakeholders. And I think that's that's where it's interesting for you to come in and to bring in your suggestions, your tool, what you've learned from your tool, what works, what doesn't work, um, and to see how it could um, be incorporated into, into broader policy initiatives. Um, now, we don't know yet whether, for instance, if we're providing, we're going to be, we're working on a code of conduct. Let me give you that as an example. We don't yet know exactly what is going to be contained. We don't yet know how it will link to other existing codes of conduct. That's what we're busy thinking about. So even that, which will be a guidance document, we don't expect at the moment that there will be a legislative proposal, sure. but we're really building it at the moment. And so it's very timely to come in and bring your ideas and your knowledge now. Um, so I would say it's you, you need to keep an eye on all of the different consultations, and I, I'm afraid there are going to be lots of them, um, and all the different stakeholder group meetings for all these different individual initiatives. Um, and obviously, it's it's nicer for the commission if you can already have discussion with other stakeholders and come with, with joint ideas and joint position papers, because then, then we see a kind of consensus building among some of the private actors too. And that's that's always a useful type of input for us. Okay, thank you very much. So we have a question from um, Roland Haumuller. Uh, what is the role of the private uh, industry um, in uh, the quality assurance schemes? for the primary production in this farm to fork uh, strategy? Okay, well, I, I've, I've sort of answered for the European policy level. As we're developing policy, um, there's certainly an opportunity for all the stakeholders to become involved. Um, once there is European policy and things are being implemented at the national level, would be depending on how things are implemented another opportunity for for private actors to get involved okay thank you very much um so now we will have a short uh, survey in the chat um so the question is how uh, have you already test a biodiversity assessment tool at farm level so we will give you two minutes to answer and Caroline will uh, start his talk and give the answer later on. So please, Caroline. Hello, everyone. I will share my screen. Um, so I'm very pleased today to, to present uh, you uh, our work on uh, the biodiversity performance tool to help uh, transforming food systems and food sector into sustainable food production. So uh, first, the biodiversity performance tool was developed um, from Solagro uh, team but also uh, with the help of all partners. So I want to thank them too. Uh, and I will present the, sorry. Uh, because I, I think if I share, I can't see the pool, so I can't see the results. So, uh, check. Okay. 
So we will see the results of uh, the pool because first it's important to better know you and uh, uh, to better know if you have already manipulated this kind of tool. So now the pool is finished and we have um, 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 50 percent of people who know answer, but uh, we have a third one who have never tested uh, this kind of uh, biodiversity assessment tool at farm level, and 20 20 percent that already have tested this, this kind of tool. So thank you for taking the time to answer the 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 pool, and now I will present you. A little bit more about what is PPT. So first, um, the biodiversity performance tool was developed in the objective to have a common decision form tool um, at farm level. It was the first choice that the consortium, the live consortium, uh, wants to do because um, biodiversity is very um, systemic and uh, as Anne Buril uh, repeats uh, a lot of time, um, he, we need to have this integrated approach to assess biodiversity. So uh, I will present the objectives and the specification of uh, the BPT. So first, uh, the main objective of the BPT is to perform functional biodiversity performance at farm level. So um, we try to introduce a scoring method uh, based on different kinds of uh, indicators and uh, on different thematics. So agronomic indicators first, environmental uh, indicators also, but also socio-economic indicators, since we saw in our benchmark that this point is really important in the specification or in your sourcing guidelines. So we want to also insist on this point in the in the tool. Um, second, the, the tool needs to be suitable for the four European agroclimatic zones, since we had uh, four countries in our, in our consortium. So Spain, uh, Portugal, France and uh, Germany. And uh, we want uh, that the tool could be able to assess different farm types, uh, grain production farms, livestock farms, either dairy or meat cattle, perennial productions, for example, olive trees in Spain, and vegetable farms. So the objective uh, was to um, the BPT could be able to reduce impacts on uh, functional biodiversity by suggesting uh, sustainable actions. And the idea also is to have a tool uh, that could be um, uh, in a learning process from farmers to certifiers, since we want that uh, the biodiversity action plan that could be proposed could be co-elaborated with the farmer, either individually or collectively, and that the measure that could be uh, proposed could be sustainable and classified into either efficiency, substitution or redesign strategy um, or reconception um, and on multi-criteria assessment since uh, we focused on biodiversity first, but for sure we want uh, that the, the actions could be also uh, adapted to climate change, for example. So our main target groups was the farmers and agricultural advisors. 
So the idea is that uh, the PPT could support the elaboration and implementation of sound biodiversity action plans at farm level, but also we address to auditors and certifiers to facilitate the assessment of uh, conservation and improvement of biological diversity at farm level. And finally, to product and quality manager and purchaser in food companies so that they could they can orientate um, to assess biodiversity performance of producers or, or of their suppliers or both. So the general approach uh, we wanted to implement uh, through the BPT first is to help farmers, advisors, and all the target groups uh, I cited um, just before, um, to help them to identify local biodiversity issues at landscape level. Because uh, we will protect uh, better what we could know. Um, Second, um, the idea is to make a farmer interview and uh, uh, proceed to the, the assessment and to evaluate um, what, is, what are the strengths and weakness of the farm to help them to improve this weakness. And then uh, to propose a biodiversity action plan uh, that could be discussed at individual or collective um, uh, group. So to assess biodiversity, uh, we focused on three main uh, thematics. First, farm environment and specifically on semi-natural habitats. Um, then on farming practices and as I said before, we, we add a socioeconomic approach uh, about awareness and involvement of uh, the farmer concerning biodiversity. So first, um, in terms of data entry into the BPT uh, and focused on farm environment, as Anne Burrell uh, mentioned, uh, the objective in the new farm to fork stat strategy and biodiversity strategy is to focus on or, or to have a focus on uh, uh, the proportion of um, natural uh, features at farm level. So we mention quantity of uh, semi-natural habitat and, for example, the proportion of semi-natural habitat and uh, uh, it's um, a proxy of uh, biodiversity at farm level that is scientifically proof. We uh, add another thematics on uh, diversity of uh, semi-natural habitat. For example, the diversity of uh, the semi-natural habitat type at farm level. Uh, another one concerning the functional composition of semi-natural uh, semi habitats. So, for example, uh, regarding the, the um, uh, length period of uh, flowering of uh, these different type of uh, habitats, um, or the, uh, the, the fact that uh, they are composed of uh, indigenous um, species. And finally, um, a sub thematic regarding functional management of uh, semi natural habitats. So, we are interested in the modality of management of this semi natural habitat because we know now, and the uh, um, scientific literature uh, said that uh, quantity is important, but also quality of this uh, semi natural habitat is uh, either important. So, uh, thanks to this um, all type of uh, questions about uh, farm environment, we uh, calculate 24 basic indicators into the tool. 
Regarding farming practices, uh, we focus on five categories. So first on the promotion of um, cultivated and wide, bio, uh, wide biodiversity. So what we called uh, agrobiodiversity. We focus also on the inputs management, since we know that uh, um, pesticides and uh, uh, fertilizers could be uh, uh, um, could be could have a very negative uh, impacts on biodiversity, and we focus also on soil protection regarding uh, be because we want to. Um, uh, aware food sector about the importance of uh, the soil biodiversity to uh, favor um, our aerial uh, biodiversity also. So regarding uh, length crop, for example, or crop rotation, uh, or the introduction of a uh, legume into the crop rotation. And we have a little focus on water management also, but it's not the main part of the, the tool. And regarding the livestock, since we know um, we, we are interested into the feeding aspects of the livestock management, and also about uh, the use of antibiotics and so on, uh, that could be also have negative impacts on biodiversity. And um, through these five categories, we are able to calculate 42 basic indicators regarding farming practices in the BPT. And finally, uh, the last um, thematic of uh, the biodiversity performance tool um, concerns mainly the farm performance monitoring uh, the awareness of farmer and worker, if uh, uh, the farmer uh, employ other people at, in this farm, and uh, the aspect of cooperation. So, if the farmer are uh, involved in research project, for example, regarding biodiversity, or is working with other NGOs, for example, to monitor um, insects and uh, so on. So we are able to calculate um, 20, um, sorry, um, uh, we are able to calculate some basic indicators regarding these um, thematics. So first, uh, regarding BPT homepage, since now it's um, BPT is uh, online um, since uh, uh, last year, just one year. Uh, so first you can register you if it's not already the case. So uh, through the, the menu, you have a button register and you will have a um, form to, to complete and then you you can just log in and once you logged you are welcome on the home page of the bpt so you will find the the objective of the of the tool the presentation the target group um, a link to the food and biodiversity project and also a link to um, download the user manual of the tool Perhaps I will just stop and show you how it looks like. Um, oh, sorry. So I hope you can you can visualize my screen. So here is the home page. Um, and you can just test BPT and uh, make a first assessment through this button. 
And once you enter into the, the, the assessment, uh, you will have five uh, tabs that, uh, that appear uh, where you will um, have to fill it um, with general information regarding the, the form um, and some other regarding the three thematics I show you regarding characterization of the environment of the farm, so mainly concerning the semi-natural habitats, regarding the farming practices here, and regarding the socio-economic system. Oh. So, just in a nutshell, our tool um, is um, supported by about 100 questions but uh, in total so if you have also livestock in your in the farm of your producers uh, it could be a maximum of uh, 100 questions and you um, uh, the tool will calculate uh, 78 um, basic indicators. And regarding uh, results, uh, first you, you will have a report on the current situation of the biodiversity on your farm uh, through a traffic light system. Uh, so here you have an illustration with the uh, different uh, basic indicator that could be calculated and the traffic light system. So uh, the, the greener uh, your result is and the better is and the redder the more is red and the, the baddest is. Um, you can find also a map of semi-natural habitats if you if you um, uh, use the map functionality into the tool. Uh, and um, as a result, you can visualize the strengths and weakness of uh, the form. And regarding the weakness, uh, you will, uh, the tool will propose you some opportunities, so some actions to implement to um, have a biodiversity action plan. So at this moment, uh, the actions are not um, um, prioritized um, so much, uh, but it's uh, an improvement we are, we are dealing with now. So you can find some recommendation regarding measure to improve potential and to reduce negative impacts to, through the biodiversity action plan. You can find also uh, a follow-up of uh, the different um, uh, assessment you will do in the same form. So from a day to another, you can find uh, what kind of uh, indicators are degrading or are improved. Uh, so it's, um, it could be helpful uh, for food sector to uh, prioritize the actions to implement in this kind of farm and uh, you it can be helpful also to monitor the implementation of the biodiversity action plan uh, another functionality is that you can uh, export uh, all the results uh, into an excel file at this moment, where you will find uh, the report on the basic indicator and the detail of uh, the calculation uh, that, uh, that are done, uh, a visualization of the strength and weakness matrix and the opportunities matrix, um, and that's it. And uh, general information regarding the farm. So to assess um, uh, the, the first assessment, uh, it can take only half a day 
or uh, one day and a half if you include mapping. So everything is uh, counted here. I mean, uh, the, the interview on the field, uh, the, um, the introduction of uh, the, the data into the website and the mapping and uh, all the, the calculation. So to produce results, it's less than one minute. Once you save and uh, uh, submit your assessment, it's less than uh, one minute to display results. And to update uh, an assessment is less than half a day. Since you can duplicate, we have a function to duplicate the, the, the assessment. And uh, it takes about two hours to duplicate, to update, sorry. So now, um, Marine, um, uh, uh, we can load the second poll, so uh, I invite you to um, to answer to the question if you have already tested the BPT uh, about which improvements you are expecting on it. Uh, so you have uh, five answers that uh, that are proposed. First on the improvement of uh, the interactivity of the questionnaire. Uh, second, on the results uh, presentation. Uh, third, on the new mapping functionalities. And fourth, on the uh, improvement of uh, the individual action plan. And uh, fifth, on the ergonomic interface. So you have two minutes to Answer to it. Um, maybe, Caroline, uh, we have a few questions. Um, so the first one was, do you have examples of food companies using the tool to assess their supply chains and setting targets and monitor progress? Donc, d'abord, first, this question, maybe. Um, we have, uh, for the moment, we have um, uh, 300 users on the, of the tool, but we have uh, mainly um, uh, food companies that assess their producers and uh, not directly their uh, suppliers, but uh, we have um, worked with um, uh, Björg and company, and uh, they are working with one of uh, their suppliers to um, use the tool and to to help them ident to identify uh, the actions to implement in the in their farm. So we have some, but uh, in different country and. Uh, and the second question we had from Laure was, uh, will the BPT remain free after the end of the life biodiversity project? And uh, the second part of the question was, how many farms or how many acres have been used uh, for the BPT? So uh, for the moment, uh, the, the tool is free of charge. And uh, I will, um, I will have, uh, I have a, a last um, uh, slide to, to show you. But um, uh, from 2021, uh, it should be, uh, we implement a fee system uh, to help us to maintain and uh, develop the, the BPT regarding the, the demand and the need of improvement. Okay, and second question from Stefano. Uh, how does this tool, the BPT, compare to existing tools? Thinking of FAO, uh, TAPE uh, program, for instance. Uh, we, at the beginning of uh, the BPT development, we, do a ben we did a benchmark and we analyzed about uh, 20 tools 
um, and uh, we um, try to to see if uh, they have all the criteria we want. So uh, first, an evaluation of uh, an assessment of the semi-natural habitat, but uh, uh, both in quantity and quality, as I mentioned, but also on farming system and uh, on, on farming practices and on a socio-economic approach. So we have some very, um, uh, some tool that target on uh, global uh, sustainability of uh, the farm. Uh, and it was not our focus. We have some other tools that focused on the um, semi-natural habitat and that are very precise on it. So we tried to propose a compromise between this tool. Uh, and uh, um, from our perspective, is the first tool that proposed the mapping functionality to helping showing the, the natural uh, features at farm level uh, and the biodiversity action plan that is uh, automatically produced. And uh, so it's the first one normally. And uh, I think I, don't, I didn't answer to the question about uh, the number of users at this moment. So we have about uh, 350 uh, users uh, last week. So, and uh, we have uh, 140 uh, assessments that are validated, but we have uh, 300 uh, uh, that are in draft, uh, uh, in total, sorry. So, if there is no more question, I uh, I will present you. Uh, no, uh, Marin will present you the result regarding the 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 pool and regarding the long life. Um, since as a, a question, so we uh, launch a um, satisfaction uh, survey. Uh, during uh, the summer, um, and we can we can say that uh, BPT is corresponding to our target public demands, uh, but uh, we know that improvements are still ongoing to better answer your your demands. So um, you need to know that uh, BPT could be uh, adapted. Uh, so, um, regarding specific mode of production, we can imagine to um, focus on uh, other indicators, for example, or concerning other um, contexts, such as uh, subtropical and tropical region, like uh, our uh, German partners um, do. So the idea for the future of our tool uh, is to uh, think about a fee system implementation. Uh, so to help them, to help us, uh, sorry, to maintain and update uh, our tool. Uh, but we will work, uh, we are working now to a fair and reasonable fees. And also we are in close contact with the Coal Farm Alliance to imagine and to think about the potential synergies between our tool, the BPT, and their tool, the Coal Farm tool, uh, and specifically the biodiversity module. So I have finished for now. So do not uh, hesitate to contact us uh, to test the BPT. You will have the, all the, the, si the slides that we are presenting. So it's, uh, you will have the, the email address. And uh, thank you, Caroline. Yes. You will show us the the address of the BPT. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's 
Have you finished with your presentation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so the the results of the um, uh, of the pool. Uh, so it seems that most of the participants haven't uh, tasted the biodiversity performance tool at the moment. So you are discovering it. It's really nice. Uh, so for the people that have already tasted the tool, the improvements uh, that have been uh, promoted are first uh, the individual action plan. So to have something more uh, specific for the for the farm, I guess, uh, to improve the presentation results and uh, to have a more uh, interactive questionnaire. So at the moment, uh, the um, uh, new mapping functionality uh, have not been prior prioritized, uh, but it's also something that we have to discuss with uh, the, the companies that are uh, testing the tool at the moment, because it, it seems to be something also uh, quite, quite important and as Caroline told you, uh, a great uh, added value. Uh, we had some questions to you. They are not uh, in the chat, but in uh, uh, in questions. Uh, so one from I'm sorry, one from Aurélie Perrin. Uh, uh, that is asking, what is the reference used to set the traffic light values? Um, regarding the different uh, indicators, we try to find some uh, scientific literature on each uh, indicator, so it depends. But uh, regarding the semi-natural habitat, we based uh, our traffic light system on the um, uh, results uh, of uh, the research projects such as KESA, uh, the BioBio Bio program also, um, or other that uh, national program such as MUSCARI. Um, so we try to, uh, to yeah, to to help us with the scientific uh, research on to define these uh, thresholds. Yes, and so in the um, user manual, all the indicators are detailed, and also all the scientific uh, sources are uh, are presented, so you can have all the details. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question is, um, how do you deal with the 78 indicators? Are they uh, aggregated? Uh, not at this moment, uh, but uh, the um, philosophy of uh, the tool uh, was to develop uh, uh, an aggregated uh, note uh, regarding biodiversity. But uh, um, on the website, we have the detail of the 78 indicator results uh, without any aggregation. But uh, the methodology is based on the DEXI method. Uh, that is um, uh, a method to aggregate uh, criteria. But we, we cannot introduce it on the on the tool at this moment since we through our um, uh, training session and uh, uh, discussion with the food companies we we understand that uh, uh, they all choose different type of indicators and it's it could be difficult to have uh, an aggregated note at this moment, but it could be an improvement. Okay. 
Um, thank you very much, Caroline. Thank you, Mary. Um, so now we will um, have Antoine Legrain from Pink Lady Europe uh, for the applications of the biodiversity performance. And if you have further questions later on, you can uh, give back um, the, uh, the talk to Caroline or to Anne Buril uh, by the end of the of the session. So we got a question from Martin Schuller, but maybe uh, a part of the answer uh, will be bring by uh, Antoine Legrand. So the question was, uh, are there any consideration to internalize the costs for additional efforts uh, for implementing biodiversity criteria? Who is paying this? the farmers only or all actors along the supply chain. So, yes, then we, we, we can discuss it um, maybe after the presentation of Antoine Lepin. Thank you. Okay, so I will share my, my presentation. Okay, so I guess uh, we are seeing it. Seeing it. So, hello, and thank you to allow me to present my uh, experience with the biodiversity tool, uh, biodiversity performance tool, sorry. So first I will make a short presentation first of uh, Pink Lady, the, the Apple, the brand, uh, the, the association. So um, the Pink Lady is a, a natural cross uh, between the Golden Delicious and the, the Lady Williams. So, um, you probably uh, know it because of the color, uh, coloring, the aromatic uh, richness, and the crunchy, uh, crunchy juicy flesh. Um, it's uh, not such a, a recent uh, variety because the first uh, tree uh, arrived in uh, seventy three in Australia, and uh, then the first trees were planted in Europe in uh, 94, 95. Uh, and in uh, 97, we created uh, the association Pink Lady Europe. So um, the association uh, based model is quite, uh, I'm sorry, so the association based model is quite, um, uh, unusual and uh, it was the first time in the world that uh, it worked like that so um, it's um, uh, an association with different kind of members so you have four kind of members first the nurseries that produce uh, trees first as uh, nearly uh, 3000 uh, growers in Europe uh, to produce po uh, apples then the nearly 100 uh, packout station um, to pack and send the apples and the 14 uh, approved uh, distributors that are selling the, the apples to every uh, kind of retailer uh, in Europe or not uh, overseas in other countries than in Europe. So all those uh, members, uh, all those uh, people are members of the association in Teddy. So it works like a classic uh, association with uh, an elected uh, board uh, with a representative of each kind of uh, members. So uh, mainly the, the association is directed by uh, producers uh, and, uh, and so on. So we are around uh, 30 employees, so it's quite small. And uh, our job is to promote the brand, to control the quality, and for me to improve the practices uh, in field, and not only in field, but also in packet station, and to propose and uh, promote the CSR strategy. So um, the different growing areas, um, we are in. Europe, in uh, France, Spain, and Italy. So nearly half half uh, for the production in France and Italy, and a little uh, part of the production in Spain. Um, a lot of producer in Italy, but it's mainly uh, micro farms 
so a very small producer around two hectares per uh, uh, per producers then um i would like to present you the pink lady commitment charter so uh, it was uh, last year we launched this uh, this charter it's uh, 14 uh, commitments uh, dispatched in uh, four axes uh, as you can see one for the environment one for the growers uh, for the territories and for the consumers i will not detail uh, of course every of the commitments but we will focus on the first one, that is to develop the agroecological practices by um, 2021. So for that, um, we decide to work on four subjects. So um, first, it was about uh, certification, uh, mainly uh, in uh, integrated production certification. So uh, different certification in each uh, production areas, uh, so in France, Italy, in South Tyrol, in Italy, and so on. Then we we are producing uh, producing a new guide, a product, production guide, a technical guide, to promote uh, some um, new uh, practices, to innovate practices, uh, mainly uh, about biological controls and 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 so on. Um, then the bee pink uh, program that is uh, to protect the pollinators and uh, to sensibilize and uh, uh, the the producers and to and to finish uh, it was about to uh, setting a tool uh, to inventory the agro agroecological infra infrastructure and uh, to measure the biodiversity performance in our farms so um, that's why we we choose to uh, to test as a biodiversity biodiversity uh, performance tools that uh, caroline uh, present uh, you just uh, just uh, before me so so um for for the biodiversity performance tool, um, our goal uh, was to, uh, as I said, uh, to uh, improve the practices uh, concerning the biodiversity. So for that, we need uh, we need to measure the actual situation to make the producer the producers aware of the biodiversity topics to propose a solution to improve the biodiversity in their orchards um, and to use, uh, to find uh, a recognized uh, tool in Europe because of the three uh, country uh, we are producing, uh, where we are producing uh, apples. So a recognized uh, tool uh, for, for our growers, uh, like that they will be uh, able to use it not only for Pink Lady, but also for the other varieties we are uh, producing, and uh, also uh, a recognized uh, tool for our uh, client, uh, consumers, uh, and so on. So we use it, we test it uh, with uh, different of uh, our uh, members, some in Italy, some in uh, France, and um, our feedback is uh, very good. Uh, we are quite uh, Happy to to see a, a good first version of the uh, of the tool. So it's easy to understand, easy to to answer. Uh, and I, I didn't wrote it, but one of the important uh, part for us it was that it is a, a new European tool because we can't uh, use a, a French tool and a, an Italian tool and a Spain tool. So. Uh, a European uh, tool is very, very important for us and to homogenize uh, the, the practices. So then um, the little uh, uh, disagreement, I can say that, is that uh, it's not enough uh, specific, <clears throat> sorry, uh, about orchards. Uh, so um, it's mainly more in uh, about uh, crops and uh, in uh, animal breeding, but uh, I think that uh, with uh, 
with producers and technicians, we can uh, uh, propose some uh, improvement. Um, uh, there were, I think, too many questions about uh, uh, animal breeding or crops when we are not concerned. So uh, we already discussed uh, that with uh, Caroline, so I, I know that it will uh, change, but uh, uh, that's it. And uh, to finish, where there is a real improvement to do, I think, is uh, the uh, action plan uh, at the end of the survey. The actual uh, action plan is not enough uh, synthetic and uh, personal. Um, and I think it's really important to for the growers to have a, a very short action plan with maybe five or ten actions to make the difference and to improve uh, the biodiversity and the practices uh, in their farms to, to focus on five or ten, I think, uh, uh, subjects. And um, as you said uh, earlier, I think a, a global note uh, would be also a, a good idea and uh, would be a good thing for the producer maybe to compare with themselves uh, with uh, the others and uh, to have a, uh, an idea of the, of the situation. So um, our next step uh, are quite uh, simple. <laughs> so um, we we will. Uh, uh, wait for the improvements we suggest and um, if it's done i think we will uh, decide to deploy this tool for all our grower and then uh, to decide uh, how to deploy it so i don't know if it's uh, for example every three years to uh, to do it uh, if it's 10% uh, of growers uh, each year uh, we we don't know yet and you mentioned the, the cost. Uh, we don't know yet also the, the cost and if uh, Pink Lady will pay for um, all the producer uh, certification, uh, not certification, but uh, use of the tool. Um, I don't know uh, other possibility, but uh, yes, we, we have to think about that. And uh, we hope to, to start uh, deploying the tool in uh, 2021, so next year if uh, everything is uh, is okay so maybe uh, first with uh, some uh, uh, pilot uh, farms and uh, then to deploy it for everybody so that's it for me okay uh, so thank you very much uh, antoine uh, for this uh, presentations and your feedback uh, on the BPT, so as uh, um, as told us the participants uh, when they answer to the poll, uh, some improvements will be done regarding the uh, interactivity of the questionnaire. So to get just questions that are relevant for your uh, uh, farming systems. And also two other um, improvements are to get an uh, individual action plan or uh, a global score or aggregated indicators. So this is improvement that we, we really would like to do. Uh, and uh, so that's why uh, we, we have to think that the biodiversity uh, performance tool will have a long life and we will have the opportunity to do all that uh, improvements uh, for sure after uh, the the end of the project this is the end of our food and biodiversity project but this is the start of the life of this uh, biodiversity performance tool with uh, all the stakeholders that are interesting, interested uh, to work with it and to, uh, to improve it uh, together. Uh, so participants, do you have any questions to, to Antoine? Uh, maybe th there were the questions about the, uh, the fee, um, uh, so is it Pink Lady that that will cover the the cost of the the diagnosis, or how do you integrate it in your 
in your strategy? Um, we don't know yet, but I think it will depend on the cost <laughs> because we don't know yet the cost. And um, I think it could be a good thing that Pink Lady uh, take a part of it. But you know, uh, Pink Lady is an association, so we are financed by the producers. So if we paid for the the, the use of the tool, finally, it's the producer that's, that pay at the end. So um, yeah, I, I think that we need to think about it and um, it, de it will depend on the cost. It will depend if we ask the, the to, to use the tool for every producers or if, we, if it will be only for uh, some of them um, and then to deploy it uh, more generally, uh, we don't know yet. At the moment, so you worked with your, pro um, you have an advisor working with a producer to, uh, to test the tool. Is it working like this for yes, in Picklandy? Uh, in Picklandy? Yes, for now, uh, for the, the test, it was like that because um, we have um, some uh, technician and some CSR people in the different uh, different company that are leading the growers. So it was more interesting that they were doing the test with the grower and not the grower alone. But uh, at the end, I think uh, uh, it would be interesting uh, to have uh, the grower alone. But uh, to do the test and uh, to be independent. Yeah. And maybe to have then a collective meeting to gather the, the growers and to exchange on yes, the yes. actions and, okay. Yes, of course. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe, Anne Buril, if you have any reaction on the presentation of uh, um, the presentation of Caroline and Antoine. Okay, well, maybe I, I could just say a few comments. I think one of the most important things that uh, Antoine mentioned was the importance of having a methodology that works across Europe. Um, and I, I think that that's a very good thing you're doing in your um, trials. You said you're working in four countries. I did note that none of them were in Eastern Europe, so perhaps it, it would be interesting to involve partners also in Eastern Europe. I think you said Spain, Portugal, France, and, and Germany, if I recall, right? Although maybe maybe I misunderstood and there are actually some, some places you're testing it on the farm in Eastern Europe. Um, because I think, I think, as I said, we want to find something that um, we can either recommend or somehow build into guidance at the EU level. Um, and that means it really needs to work equally across all conditions. Um, maybe I can take the opportunity, though, to, to sort of react to one question I saw in the chat. There was a question from um, Nuno Sarmento asking about how to provide evidence that biodiversity measures measures are working in the field. Um, and I think, I mean, that's that's the underlying basic question here, and I think it's one you're trying to address. But I wanted to point out that it, it really depends what you're trying to provide the evidence for um, and to whom and at what scale. Because, of course, the CAP does already have um, some indicators in it, and in particular, the condition of the agricultural habitats. And it's both whether they're good in ec good ecological condition or not, and also the trend. In addition, there's the farmland birds index. But these, these are date indicators, there are also input indicators, but they're very much for use at a kind of general level. And if you want to get into more specific individual farms, what we need is, is some kind of tool that really looks more at the specificity. And I understand that's that's what you're trying to do. So I, I think that's interesting. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Han. Uh, so, we are uh, perfectly on time. Uh, thank you very much for the, the presenter, for sharing your, your experience and uh, your time. And uh, thank you for, for your participation to all, uh, because yeah, you were quite uh, 
a great number of participants. So we hope to stay in contact for the future project. As we told you, this is uh, the beginning of a new life for uh, the biodiversity performance tool. So do not hesitate uh, to, to contact us to have uh, more, uh, more details. Thank you, very, uh, thank you very much, everybody, and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, oh, yeah, and you, will, you can have um, a short time to answer to, uh, to a small questionnaire for, for the satisfaction, and you, you will get all the PowerPoint presentation on the website Food and Biodiversity. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much to all of you.